Hi, my name's Sean and you can catch me at simplesean.com. Today we have this, another Can I Fix It video featuring this lovely Xbox One S white one terabyte console. This I bought off eBay as not working and the owner, the previous owner said that what happened was some water went in the top of this. Kids spilt some water in the top and ever since then it's not worked. Now the good thing about this is that there's actually three controllers as well, uh, apparently also not working. So this should pose quite a bit of a challenge, but if we can get the console working and these working, then it'll be a great console for someone. Now, if you remember from my videos in the past, I actually managed to repair one of these consoles. It turned out to be a faulty power supply. Now I suspect with water, if water's involved in this, that maybe this is gonna be something a little bit more significant, but I thought I'd go for the challenge anyway. So without further ado, let's plug this in, turn it on and see if it actually lights up or if anything happens. So I've just turned it on, just gonna press the power button now. And we're not getting anything at all. So clearly the water is damaged inside here, probably quite a bit of corrosion on the motherboard, I would think. So let's get this open and see what we can do in order to fix it. And as you can tell, here we are, it's extremely dusty inside. This has had very, very good use, you can tell. So we're going to take the final few bits off and see what's going on underneath. So before we go any further with looking at the board, I'm going to check this power supply because what's the point of looking at a board if the power supply isn't working? Maybe when the water went in, this was the first thing that actually shorted out and it's nothing to do with the board at all. We press the button and we've got no power at all. So it could be the power supply is at fault. So I'm gonna get out multimeter and read the voltage. Maybe this is what the problem is. So first we're dealing with this power supply. So if we check the bottom of here, it will tell us so the input here is 240 volts. Hopefully you can see this, 240 volts and the output is supposed to be 12 volts. So this is what we've got to be checking for. We're going to be checking on this to make sure we're getting 12 volts out. So when you have a look at this cable here, the three gray ones are your positive and the three black ones are your negative. So what we're going to be doing, the positives all go into the bottom here we're going to be putting our positive probe from the multimeter in there and we're going to be putting a negative probe into the top row where the blacks feed and then we're going to see hopefully it will read somewhere in and around 12 volts if it does then we know that this power supply is good and it is something to do with the board so now we'll be plugging in the power supply We're going to switch it on. I'm going to take our negative probe. Stick it up here. And we're going to take our positive probe and put it in the bottom. And there you go, 12 volts. So that suggests to me that the power supply is good. We'll just try a different rail here. So I'll put it in here. And I'll put it this one over here, 12 volts. And again, I'll put this back here, <clears throat> being sure not to touch these, and put this one in the middle, 12 volts. So that says to me, the power supply is working just fine. So the issue will be with the motherboard. So let's have a look. So here's a first look at the board. And as you can see, it's extremely dusty. They did say that they spilt water on this. So if it went down the fan, the likelihood is that it's gone around here and probably onto the underside of the board. 
because I can imagine what they'll most probably do is try and put the board upside down. Um, so let's have a look at the underside of the board. And as you can see, look, massive discoloration here. Those pins there are definitely a different color. They you can tell there's a bit of rust there. It's over here. We've had a lot of water on this. This is going to be a very, very difficult one to actually fix. You've got water stains down there. All along here is also water damage. There's lots and lots of water damage on this unit. So I don't know if I'll be able to fix this one, but we're going to give it a try. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get some isopropyl alpha, isopropyl alcohol, IPA, and a toothbrush, and we're going to give this board a thorough clean. Hopefully by cleaning some of the rust, as you can see on some of these components, rust and corrosion away, maybe we can get this thing coming back to life. But first we need to give this board a very, very good clean. A few moments later, Now that we've got this board cleaned up, what we're going to do is that we're going to test for shorts. So we already know that the power supply is working fine. So the next thing to do is to check the actual power in. Do we have a short as soon as we come in here? This will most likely tell us if there is something wrong with the power delivery system, which is around here. So what I'm going to do again is get my multimeter and literally I'm going to stick one probe in the positive, one probe into ground. If it beeps in continuity mode, then we know that we've got a short. And so let me just get the, uh, the multimeter and we're gonna stick it onto continuity mode. And all we're, all we're waiting for really is a beep. So for anyone who's using one of these, continuity mode, you normally have this little symbol here. And what happens, it just wants to test to see if it actually has an open circuit. So what will happen is that if it detects a path back to itself, it will beep and that's what we're going to be looking for so here we go i'm going to stick one prod in here and another one in here and there you go it's beeping do it again in something else yeah it's beeping 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 so the first thing to do in a situation like this we need to check the MOSFETs. These are the things on the next Watch One S that typically go first. So we're going to be testing the MOSFETs and I'll show you exactly how we do that in a second. And what we should have is three identical readings from each power system. So just imagine each one of these, you see here, these two chips, two chips, they're all part of a 12 volt rail. So one of these is a rail, another one is a rail, another one is a rail. If any of these rails stop working or if one of these MOSFETs go bad, then the actual board won't power up. So I'm hoping it's something as simple as that because now that the board is clean, everything looks pretty good. Um, we haven't got any corrosion on any of the parts, so that is good and we just had a big buildup of dust which has been cleaned away quite well. That we're now going to stick the multimeter into diode mode. And I'm gonna zoom in to, on one of these chips and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to be testing and what we should be expecting out of it. All right guys, I know the picture is a little bit fuzzy but what we've got here is this small chip. So what we're going to be doing, we're gonna be testing this with the multimeter. And what we're gonna be testing is the leftmost pin on here so we've got one two three four pins going along here and we want the one on the very left and then we're also going to put one prod on there and the other prod is going to go onto the left side of this resistor this little black chip right here now what we should have when we do this is identical readings across all of these mosfets if we have a low number, then we know that the MOSFET has probably failed and it is not actually delivering power and the board is shutting itself off as a protection mechanism. So what we'll do, we're going to stick the multimeter into diode mode. And diode mode, for anyone who doesn't know, normally they come all together now, is this one here that looks like a triangle and a little sign. So we want this on here as well. Some of you have multifunction ones, but you want it to have that symbol there. 
And when you do, I'll stick this here. Hopefully you guys can see it. But we're going to, as I said, actually let me just move this out of the way. Now we've got it in diode mode, we're going to, as I said before, get the negative. The negative probe is going to touch that fourth pin, or the first pin on the left hand side, and your red one is going to touch here. And we should get a reading, I do believe it's around 0.6. So let's do that now. So this probe on there, this probe on here, and I'm just going to check my multimeter and oh, I'm getting a reading of 0 0.000. So already I believe that this MOSFET is not good. But what we need to do, we need to check the others and make sure it's not just this one. I'm definitely touching both points, but I'm not getting a reading. It is 0 0.00. So... I'm going to move it up to the second one. I'm just going to do this again. So black probe onto now. Red probe on here. And yes, I've got 0 0.665. So then let me just do that again so you guys can see. By doing that, you should get a reading on this board, it is 0.665. I'm going to do the same with the very final one over here. And again, I've got 0.665. So the reading from this one and this one, absolutely identical. However, this one here is coming up at 0.00, which is telling me that something is wrong with this chip that is probably dead and it needs to be replaced. Just so you guys can see it with the multimeter in play, I'm just going to zoom out for a second. I believe we have now found the issue. So I'm going to put that there so you guys can actually see the reading. I'm just going to do this again. So black probe on here, this is in diode mode. Black probe on here, red probe on that chip on the little resistor there. And as you can see, 0 0.00. If I repeat this test on the middle one here, 0 0.666, 0 0.665. And if I do it again on this very final one over here, 0 0.666. So as you can tell, the readings from the first and the second, are more or less the same. But this one here, I believe is dead. This is potentially what is causing this board not to work. So what we'll need to do, we'll need to get some flux, a heat gun, we need to remove this MOSFET and actually replace it. But what we'll do to check that this is actually the thing that's causing the shorts, is that we'll remove it and then we'll rerun the test, the continuity test of putting the probe in here and here and seeing if it beeps. If it stops, then we know that this was at fault, we should get it replaced and hopefully we may get the working Xbox. So let's do that now. Okay, so it's time to get rid of this MOSFET. I've put flux on top of it. Time to get the heat gun out and let's get this thing off. The heat gun I've got at 400 degrees. A few moments later. Wow, so that took a lot longer than I was uh, expecting. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to check to see if the short has actually disappeared. Here's the offending article. The little MOSFET is now at the side of the board. We're just going to check to make sure that we've got no continuity between these two like we did before. Hopefully I haven't destroyed the board because I did spend a long time trying to get this one chip off. So hopefully I haven't destroyed the board. So I'm just going to go and stick one prod in here, one prod in there. And look at that, got nothing. That's good. Let me try and do this so you guys can see. Nothing. Look at that. So that's encouraging. That makes me think that that MOSFET was bad. So luckily enough, I do have 
whole pile of uh, Xbox One MOSFETs, which I have never actually used. So, um, yeah, this will be interesting. This is the first time I've done this. And I'm hoping that this will work. So, let's do this. Let's give it a try and see what happens. I'm going to heat up where the MOSFET is going to go first. So, I'm just going to try and melt the solder above it. And then I'm just going to push the actual MOSFET chip on top of it. And hopefully that will do the trick. Okay, that looks like it's done it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly check for shorts and I'll look, under, look at this under a magnifying glass just to make sure that it's all lined up. And if it is, we'll give it a try, see if it actually boots up. So we start one prod in there, the other prod in there. There we go, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. It's a very good sign. Okay, so that works done now. So. Hopefully, hopefully, this has now done the trick. We found it to be a bad MOSFET. The MOSFET has now been replaced. The short that we heard before has gone. So what I'm hoping to do now is let the board cool down for five minutes or so. And then what I'll do, I'll put in the CPU fan because then we can see if that spins. And also I'm gonna put in the power and also I'm going to put in the front panel, the bit where you normally Go and press the button to turn on the Xbox. And what I'm hoping is that when you press the button, it will turn on. We'll hear the, uh, the lovely three beeps, which means that this should now be working. So we've put it together as much as I think it needs to be put together in order to get this light on, or at least to see if any power actually does go through this board. So it's time to plug it in, see what happens. Brilliant, it's on. The white light is on, that's spinning. All right, I'm gonna turn it off very quickly because that CPU, there's nothing on there at the moment. So what we're gonna do now, ah, fantastic. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put this whole thing back together and see if it actually boots up on screen. But this is great news, it actually boots up. So all of that was down to a bad MOSFET, a tiny little, chip this small thing right here cost about 20p to buy that's 20p component stop this 100 200 pound machine from working because someone accidentally spilled water over it and as soon as water went in this went bad it must have shorted or something but this is great news people this is working again so i'm going to put this all back together next thing you'll see is this in front of a TV and we'll see the big reveal. Does it output to TV? So I've now hooked up the Xbox One to the television. Question is, when I switch it on, will it work? Will it output anything to the TV? Let's give it a go. So that's a great start. We've got a white light coming from the Xbox One. Question is, will the TV pick something up? Oh, that's a good sign. That's a very, very good sign. Scanning for devices. It's found the Xbox One. This is fantastic news, fantastic news. We've got it working. We have got the Xbox One working. Look at that, look at that. A small MOSFET was the problem caused by someone spilling drink through the fan hole. And look at that, it has been fixed this was fantastic fantastic i absolutely enjoyed doing that one and i hope you guys learned something thank you all for watching i'm not gonna lie this was a hard fix which did take some time and a lot of research but we got there and now we have a happy and working xbox one s i hope you found this video both entertaining and informative i appreciate all the views and likes i've had on all my other videos so far if you like what you saw click that subscribe button oh and don't forget to hit that bell notification too you'll be alerted when new content arrives. I've been Simple Sean, and today we've been successful in mending a broken Xbox One S. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you again in future videos. Bye for now.